Okay, welcome back. Um, I just finished watching Korra, and I, all I can say is that it's amazing. And this review will contain spoilers, so hopefully um, when you're watching my video, you probably already saw the episode because I'll contain spoilers, or else you can just click that little close button and probably come back later. Um, but anyway, this episode was just amazing. Oh my god, I cannot believe. I didn't even know that there was going to be an, any good episode that can beat episode 6. But this episode was just amazing. Um, this episode, if you don't like relationship kind of episode, this episode is totally for you because it advanced the, advanced the plot really, really well. So I guess let's get started on all the things. I mean, the episode begins, of course, with uh, Mako and Bolin and Asami go. I mean, coming to live with Korra um, on the island. So that was really interesting because um, you get to see the kids again and. Oh, Every time you see the kids, you just, I just, I just, I just dances happily, like, in my brain. Ugh, just, they're so cute. I mean, my dad, my, when my dad was like, oh, I was like, you know, you get to see the kids again. He's, he's like, oh, so more fast talking? I'm like, yeah, yeah. Icky is just so cute. Milo is, Milo just likes Asami so much. That is so cute. Um. Janora, she's she's a. She, I see what you. I was like, I see what you did there. Wait, wait. She was like, oh, I'll bring you to the men's dormitory kind of thing. And I'm like, oh, girl, girl. Oh, I'm so proud of her. Um, that is so cute. I kind of like. You see how like Bolin and Icky is so relatable. How they talk so fast. They're a little hyper. They're a little. Um, I guess they're just so happy all the time. And it's just so adorable. I just oh, they're so cute. Um. Milo, I guess, oh, he, when he rolled on Naga's like, yep, yep, oh, I was like, oh, so much emotion, oh, that is so cute. Um, when, and when Iggy was like, Asami, did you know that, you know, Korra, like, Mako, I was like, oh, that was hilarious how Korra reacted, and I just, I just love how animated all the characters are, and it's so adorable, and so, like, I don't know, so, kind of almost Japanese, kind of like, oh, it's just so cute, oh. Amazing. Um, then of course the plot goes to kind of um the new police chief crap and stuff. And uh, I just hate Tarlock. I hate him so much. I hate him more than Amon because I don't actually like Amon. So seriously, the worst character in like not the worst character. I mean the most evil bad character in this show is definitely Tarlock, and I can totally feel the fandom hating on him because. He is so bad. I mean, I definitely a great job to break of like writing this great evil character that provoke your evil hatred towards him. Because Azula last um I mean of course in the previous avatar, um Azula is so lovable. Like I know he's she's totally evil, but I can't help to love her because she's just fabulous. I just love Azula. Azula and Toph, favorite character of Avatar, the last airbender. But with Tarlock, you just hate him. I just completely hate him. Every time I see him, I'm gonna smash his face into a wall, break his fingers, and totally just, like, do horrible things to him. Yeah, because I just hate him so much. I, oh, it's, I hate him. Um, and I just, I mean, of course, then he kind of provokes Korra of thinking about, um, her airbending, and then it leads to kind of a foreshadowing for the spiritual world, and, like, questioning the flashbacks and stuff so that is very interesting i want to see where the spiritual part of Korra is gonna come out so i'm really really exciting S excited hopefully maybe in the finale she gets connected with a through the spiritual world so that is very exciting and i just love how tenzin is so sweet um he's so caring oh tenzin all the characters are just fabulous um and then of course, um, the episode goes to the whole team avatar thing, and you can definitely, I mean, I love Bright for writing Asami as a really strong female character. So, it gets to a clip of the promo, and that was amazing. I mean, she's just so kick ass. Asami is just so kick ass. So, I don't, so all of you Asami haters out there that were like before because she went, I mean, interrupted the Makura ship, I mean, just. You, you guys are so shallow. Um, but I like how she's just so dominant. I, I guess, let's see, what else to talk about? Oh, there was a lot of awesome, awesome bending. Wow. 
when Paco uh, Lightning then, I swear to God, uh, my neighbors probably thought that I burned myself and or someone, some murderers in my house because I screamed so loud and my door was open. So yeah, so my neighbor if he thought that I was dying, but I screamed like like a freak, cause I don't know. I know I saw him lightning bend before, but wow, gosh, lightning bending! How gorgeous is that? Um, so that was amazing with all, a lot of kick-ass, cheap blocker bending all, epicness going on there. I mean, Asami was definitely kick-ass. I mean, could, did you see her like she's driving and she's like, I'm gonna zap you all with my other hand with the chi. Blocker Iron Man hand. Um, it was amazing. I mean, wow. And the partnership between Team Avatar is amazing. And especially between kind of Mako and Asami, how like they kick butts. I'm like, oh, you guys are such a cute couple. And of course, since Asami kind of knows how Korra is kind of, I don't know, like, you know, like Mako, she's like getting suspicious. And I'm like, oh, for those relationship lovers, episode that they might be more relationship episode coming up so that foreshadows that so that was great um what else um and then of course it gets back to the tarlock thing and it was just oh i hate tarlock i have a suspicion i mean this is a totally probably a horrible theory but i was thinking maybe tarlock is like amon's brother and i'm the aunt's always jealous of tarlock because you know tarlock is a kick-ass waterbender you can definitely see that in the last few scenes of the whole episode. Wow, he's kick ass, but oh gosh, I hate that guy. And probably Amon because that he was kinda jealous of Tarlock because he's awesome and pew pew um water bending and all, he probably wanted to, uh, to be equal. And definitely you can see that Tarlock is not like the equalist. He hates like equalist, I guess. Oh. It's just so frustrating because definitely he's such an oppressionist. I just I feel so bad for the like the non benders and I'm like, oh Tarlock, I hate you. Um, of course, I mean Tarlock and then capturing all the team members and capturing Korra. What I ugh, I wanna see more of him because wow. That is I just I love that how the character is built up, oh, it's just amazing. I want to see where the kind of the mystery, there's so much mystery. I just wish that there's more, like, the episodes are longer, so ex explain more. Oh, God, um, want to see, basically, how, why is, like, Tarlock so strong? What is going on with the flashback? Which I totally forgot to mention, but, like, flashback, oh, God. You see more of Sokka, Aang, and Toph, and bloodbending. What? I want to know more. Give me more flashback. Give me more. Uh, wow. Oh, I'm so speechless. Um, but I, I mean, what's wrong with, I mean, all the flashback, there's no Katara. I want to know, you know, what's going on. Like, what, is there a reason why there's no Katara in all the flashback? Hmm. I want to know. I want to know. I want more episode. So, and, and like, what do you think, where do you think this whole, like, kind of, season is going how is, is the season gonna end i have no idea because it feel it felt like this episode was kind of like finale for the season it was like wow it's a big stop to the whole season i don't know how this is gonna pick up maybe tenzin finally erupts with awesome power and totally dominates the whole episode um maybe that i want to see more maybe even katara will probably travel out of the um South Pole and totally just come to Republic City and save Korra and all the team Avatar. Maybe that was to happen. I don't know. I really want to see and just a few more weeks until the season finale, right after all my school. So that is amazing. I really want to know. Um, let's see. Did I miss anything? Hmm. This for how long is this? Oh, it's going on like two ten minutes, but. Overall, if you really enjoy plot and then seeing episode, I'm pretty sure you probably like this. But tell me what you thought of this episode. What did you like? What did you hate? What did you wish there was more? Um, I wish that maybe in a season two, there's more Pema and Lin and Tens and stuff going on. Because that's going to get like, mm, that's going to get interesting. So I cannot wait. I don't really want any relationship episode on Korra. Asami and Mako, because I don't know. I don't know. I mean, 
Mako and Asami, they're cute together. I don't really ship Korra with anybody. I don't know. Don't know, but don't hate on me if I hate your ships. I'm sorry, I respect all your ships. And, yeah, so I guess that's it. This is a long video, and I film. I'm sorry if I talk too much, but, and if I contain spoilers and you totally forgot to close this, I'm so sorry. But, I can't wait to talk to you guys more. I'm probably gonna go watch Young Justice, so I'm gonna bolt. Bye, see you guys next week. Doo -doo -doo. Yeah, flashback, I guess, analysis right here. Um, I mean, it's so typical. Probably most people, ah, oh, that's so funny. But, um, yeah, my sister's just standing there awkwardly. But I, I don't know. I mean, a lot of people, of course, thinking about the flashback and how Tarlock's dad is gonna be, um, the evil guy and everything. But, I mean, that's so typical. Come on, Frank. I mean, if that's it, I'm, I'm kind of quite disappointed. I wish there's more. Of course, it's gonna be connected to Tarlock. So I'm kind of interested at how this is gonna go, but I'm hoping that maybe it's actually Tarlock himself, so he's actually like a kind of a vandal savage of Korra, <laughs> kind of he's like immortal or or something, and how or like or like Lazarus Pit or something, that, or something and that immortal. like maybe he cut his, like changed maybe did something with his face, so like um Tenzin and other people won't notice him that he like kind of is actually the same person that would be, cool. be really cool because i want that um because i think the whole tarlock's father crap that's too normal i mean frank kind of already disappointed me with asami's dad rebellion thing i'm hoping there's more to that because that's really typical yeah mm. yeah any thoughts on the flashback yeah or anything i guess I'm disappointed not to see Lynn in this episode. No, I, I thought mean, it would be a really follow up for her to actually just start working. True, but um, I love this episode though. I do, but I'm, I'm just disappointed not to see Lynn. That's all. I want to see maybe Lynn and Tenzin in the next episode trying to help Korra. And I mentioned in the uh, other the next video. Caught out of the past, so we're all thinking that it's gonna be something about Korra trying to her struggle to come back to the city. And then she's gonna call upon Aang in the Avatar state or something like that, more spiritual. Because I was thinking episode. that maybe you know Katara can even come out of the South Pole and kind yeah. of help. Um, she can give awesome advice. Like, she yeah. can be like, "Nah, -uh, I know blood bending." And then <laughs> yeah, she's gonna be like, "I don't need a full moon too, bitch." Mm -hmm. Um, and that would be really interesting to see the blood benders kind of competing and maybe even. I mean, definitely Katara is not in favor of blood bending, but maybe Korra can learn it. I don't know. Yeah, something like that. And this but flashback analysis has taken a whole different direction. Yeah, but anyway. But, um, I'm surprised for Korra not to, I don't know, the lack of, of water bending in this oh, episode yeah. for Korra was kind of surprising. I thought, yeah, isn't she like some epic water bender? I mean, come on. Like, she, I mean, granted, I think Rick is saying that. We've seen enough of Korra's waterbending from uh, the pro bending tournament, so they're wanting to show more of her um, her earthbending in this episode mainly. And the last part where she breathed fire, that was pretty cool, and I was really like, oh, I was like, oh my god! Yeah, I mean, I just, oh yeah, definitely, that was really emotional and really, ugh, I don't know. She was really like maybe fire. because I was thinking that maybe you know Korra's personality is kind of actually more firebender type. Um, she's more. An, an earthbender even, like how strong. kind of strong and tough and how non kind of spiritual ish yeah, spiritual -ish, even like cause water and air is kind of more calming and I really do think Korra, you know, it's more the so, so she's amazing. Um let's She's see. relatable. I think I think her Korra's character is really um well written because I don't know, the impulsive character of uh, when she was at the police station and she she was really mad. Oh, I forgot to mention that in my video. I was about to say something. I like how Tenzin is actually like, he's Mr. Calm, but he have moments where he's like, maybe his true form shows up. <laughs> but that's really, I mean, wow, that's I amazing. I, I love how Break wrote that in. Um, that's amazing. I totally forgot to mention that on my other video because I just ramble and I totally forgot. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, yeah. I need you here. So I'm gonna probably shut this camera off and goodbye.